Okay, let's look at the physics of Fruit Ninja. Really, this uh, stuff is about a lot of video games, but Fruit Ninja is one that's very popular, so let's go ahead and get to the game. Here's the game. Uh, you can see that we have fruit flying in the air, and your job is to slice them with your finger and avoid the bombs. It's a great game, and you've hopefully played this before, but anyway, let's get to the physics. Okay, so in physics, if we have an object that is only acting in motion due to the gravitational force, then we call this projectile motion. And it will only have a vertical acceleration, and it will move in the horizontal direction with the constant velocity. Those are the two things that characterize projectile motion. And so we have these two kinematic equations that describe the motion in both the horizontal x direction and the vertical y direction. So here's just an equation for the x direction. It says the x position changes at a constant rate, and the y position is like a parabola. It depends on uh, t and t squared, where t is the time. Okay, so those are the kinematic equations. Uh, I'm not really going to go into those in too much detail where they come from, but, but there is a lot of fun stuff there too. Okay, so what if I were to actually plot the position of a fruit in the game? You can do this with the video analysis tools, and here is a plot of both the vertical acceleration, the vertical motion in the orange data and the horizontal motion in the blue data. And you can see that they do seem to agree with projectile motion. The blue horizontal data is a constantly changing position, which would be a constant velocity. That's exactly what we would expect. And then the orange data looks like a parabola. Again, exactly what we would expect. So it looks like it is projectile motion. So that's, that's cool, right? Now, we can do something even better. We can say, we can use this data, and now I'm showing just the vertical position of a particular piece of fruit, to find out the size of the fruit. So the first thing I need to do is, in the video, I need to say how big is something. I need to scale the video. So what I did was to look at these vertical planks of wood and to say one of those pieces of wood is one unit wide. And I call it a meter prime, but it's not a, it's not a meter. I don't know what it is. I just I call it one. And from that, I can plot a equation that fits the data, and I get it right here in the graph. And you see the term in front of t squared is negative 2.3. If you go back to the kinematic equation, that should be one half the acceleration. So the acceleration would be twice that. And I get an acceleration of negative 4.6 meter primes per second squared. Now I can just do a conversion. If I say I know it should be on Earth, and on Earth the acceleration should be negative 9.8 meters per second squared, I can solve for the connection between the meter prime and a meter, and I get one meter prime, or the width of that board is 2.1 meters. Now I can use that. Now if I use that to find out the size of the fruit, I can just measure one of these bananas and I get 1.5 meters. That's about 4 feet 10 inches. So here's me. I'm at, uh, this is actually at NASA Stennis in Mississippi, next to a properly nin fruit ninja sized banana. So you see it's pretty big. Okay. How about some homework? This is your homework. Here is an apple in the game on the left. And if I measure it according to the units in the game, I get 75 centimeters. And then here's an actual apple in real life. How big would the apple be in a game? What would it look like? See if you can make a picture of the size of an apple in Fruit Ninja in real life. Okay, so that's, the sc that's finding the scale of fruit in Fruit Ninja. But really, if we think about constant acceleration motion, there's three things. And we can pick two of them to be true. So we have the vertical acceleration. I picked that to be negative 9.8. I, I said this on Earth, so I know that. Um, I could pick the scale, and, I, and I, I didn't know that. Or I could pick the time rate. You could have the video going in slow motion. Okay, so for the previous thing, I assumed the time was real, and the acceleration was negative 9.8, and I solved for the scale. What if I went the other way? What if I assumed the acceleration was negative 9.8 and the scale was correct, but the video was just in slow motion and I want to find the correct time? 
Okay, so here's that same graph, but now I've scaled it according to the size of an actual apple. And that means that this is no longer real time. It's fake time. Uh, and now if I compare the acceleration here to the real acceleration, then I have to solve not for meters, but for seconds. And so if you do that, I get one second in the game is 2.83 seconds in real life. So the video needs to be about three times as fast to be realistic. So let's, let's do that. Here's a fixed video. A fixed video showing the correct real life speed on the left, and this is an actual footage from the game on the right. And you can see here that if the game was in real life speed with the correct scale, it would be pretty much impossible. It'd be like Flappy Bird's hard, okay? So, so that's why they make these videos, video games slower. You know, they, they don't make it realistic completely. They want to change the parameters of the game to make it more enjoyable to play. So it's a balance between uh, scale and time to make the best Fruit Ninja game that you can make, or the best any game that you make. This is true for Angry Birds, this is true for Fruit Ninja, and most games don't have realistic acceleration. Okay, so that's a short little lesson on Fruit Ninja and acceleration in video games anyway, and maybe you can go out and try some on your own homework.